This is a Suboptimal Podcast. Check out our Suboptimal content at suboptimal.co. Hey guys, welcome to episode four of the NICAST. We're going to be talking about branding and why it's important with Somewhat Decent. He is a amazing, talented graphic designer and brand designer. Um, you can check his stuff out at Instagram.com, drained underscore brand, or Instagram.com underscore, or MP slash MP, MP? Oh shit, I've already messed this up. MP underscore design? <laughs> I'll let I'll let I'll let somewhat correct me on that because I've already screwed it up yeah, and exactly. I'm not going to edit You're that good. now. But <laughs> um, you can also check it all out at mpdesigns.com, e m p e y design.com. Um, so decent. Uh, hi, how are you? And what okay. are you up to recently, sir? I am good. I've been pretty busy. Um doing some branding stuff for a couple of dudes but mostly busy uh with making my uh clothing brand oh yeah uh, i've been spending most of my time doing so how's that been like you've been working on i know you've been working on some suboptimal some red nolis from your instagram yep. posts um yep. is there anything else you've been working on you could talk about or is things kind of hush hush on a few sides um, see, I'm doing branding for a streamer that's just getting started. His so, um, name is Spartan Gamer. Okay. Um, and that's about it that's set right now. Okay. In terms of, like, hired work. Uh-huh. See, so this is, this yeah. is the, he's the man for hire position right now. That's, yeah. that's, how, that's how he is. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so... Tonight, we kind of want to talk about like graphic design, why it's important to a content creator, and why it's important to know how to talk to your graphic artists, because mm-hmm. this is something that I'm, I'm, I'm new to this. I'm still learning how to talk and how to figure things out. My, my normal way of talking about things is I go get an SOW with a company and do it through my IT work, which is a statement of work, and I just like, okay, this is our statement of work. Go do it, and then they'll come mm-hmm. back, and that's not kind of the way a lot of artists work. So, yeah. so one of the things I wanted to kind of ask you is like, why does branding matter? Um, so you, like a lot of people don't really grasp a lot of the ideas because people think of their branding and their logo and stuff like that as just something cool to have, something to make themselves look cool. Mm-hmm. But um, like when you when you learn design and you you study this stuff you like start to realize that especially in the world the online world we live in nowadays Mm -hmm. um first impressions are like a split second thing and so um like logos are massively important because you know if somebody's going onto a platform and just decide to browse and look for someone and branding in general is important because we're going to scroll through and make like subconscious split decisions um, of who we will or won't watch just simply based on what their stuff looks like, how much it looks like they've put their work into it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's something that a lot of people don't think about, but if you like pay attention to yourself, you'll realize how much you pay attention to it. And I guess it also goes back to like when you said, um, one of the first things you mentioned was how, that first impression. So it, it comes out to how do you want to represent yourself to the individual coming into your stream? As though exactly. you can you could you can go on full mame, and this is something that um, Professor Broman has talked about in his podcast was that he discussed about how he did all his stuff in MS Paint and just made it look as janky as possible because that was his skill set. But it also became kind yeah. of like the channel mame of you know yeah it looks janky, but this is this is who I am. It's me doing it. And, yeah, and you can own that. So it depends upon what your aesthetic is and what you're wanting to you know, you sure. represent to the world, I guess. Yeah, your your branding is your opportunity to instantly decide what kind of message you want to give to your viewers, mm-hmm. and that's why it's sort of important to work with someone who understands that, um, so that they can help you sort of get across the message that you're looking for yeah and we're not just talking about like the logo or the 
um, background. Like right now, if you're looking on YouTube and you see this podcast, you'll see that I have like my logo blown up in the corner and I have this rainbow thing and I got these other images going off in the corner here, which are all my different like stream groups that I'm part of. And it's not just the logo. There's it's the whole aesthetic of what your different scenes are going to look like in OBS or, or an X split and kind of how the arrangement of the different items you work with on a graphic designer to get there. Like there's the cam yeah. overlay and then the chat overlay and how everything looks together mm-hmm. kind of makes you a whole package is, and this is how I'm learning it right now. It's like it's something I've kind of ignored and I, I, I've very did very minimal and I've kind of built building up over the last year and X months now that I can't count in the top of my head cause I'm still sick. But, um, <laughs> uh, so it's 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 about bringing everything together and working with your graphic designer to bring it together because one piece is a piece, but bringing everything together is when you have a package and when you have that full look. And that's really right. what it is about bringing is you'll have not just on the screen, but then below the stream, if you're on Twitch, you'll have your, your banner buttons in, in Mixer. You have like this nice little web space area. You can have a so- solid image or you can have it broken apart into, into panels again. So it really depends upon what your feel and what what you what you want it to look like. Yeah, yeah, I think you nailed it for sure. <laughs> that uh, and that's really like what you, you spend, I'd say, like the majority of the time, sort of figuring out when you go about doing this stuff, is you want to really sort of come up with an idea, and um, a sort of like message and um vibe that you want to get across and so you have to kind of keep that whole general picture in mind before you start actually working on anything yeah and what, that has a huge impact on how people will perceive your channel yeah so one of the things that i i had an issue with like i'm i'm working on trying to get a bit of a rebrand going on myself and one of the things I'm learning through talking with my friends that are doing stuff like this is like how to talk to somebody. Like I, I just didn't know how to talk and say, you know, I have this idea in my head. I want some type of organic tree mm-hmm. um, with, you know, the D20 dice. And this is like when I had this, this light sign that's behind me here from, this is from those light signs. They're a company that's actually gone out of business. You can't get these anymore, but this, my logo is actually this image here in the corner. And so what I had asked was, um, when I want to get this designed was, Hey, I like a tree of life and I like D 20. Sure. Those are, or- that's an organic in my D and D background. I-, I would love to see that together. And that's kind of just what it, the guy put together. And I didn't really know how to talk to him at the time to just even get that done. I, right. I was like, yeah, that sounds great. And then he sent me a, a picture and I'm like, cool. Uh, feedback uh yeah it looks good it looks like a tree of life and it looks like a d20 i i don't know what to say so yeah. <laughs> from from your perspective as the artist like what type of feedback are you looking for are you looking for cool looks good or are you looking for more information or are you trying to understand what are you trying to understand when you're looking for feedback from the person that you're doing work for yeah that's um it's a hard question and it's going to be different for everyone for sure. And ideally you're getting a lot of those things figured out before you even are getting any feedback on anything, you know? Okay. Um, so like, like the best thing you can do, cause it's hard to really put to words the feel and idea you have in your head. Mm-hmm. But, um, what I've done in the past or what I've done pretty much any time I did, any kind of branding or anything for anyone is um i'll talk to them and i ask them to give me a list um of different things that they feel are influential to not only their own channel but to like them in general them as people okay so like for example when i did the branding for um one salty sailor uh he you know, he was from the Navy and he told me a bunch of these different sort of symbolic things that um, were part of that. Okay. As well as, like, that had meaning to him. And so I went about doing his stuff with that in mind and tried to figure out ways to bring that all into it. 
And I think that works really well if you don't try to visually paint a picture, but more give a list of well, the symbolisms or the um, like attitude kind of idea that you want to have in general, and then just trust that the artist will be able to use that to get what you're looking for. Um, in terms of feedback, it's it's hard, and it's something that I'm learning to get. Like a good artist or and a good designer is going to make your life easier because they're going to sort of tell you what they're looking for in terms of feedback. Okay. You know, just being told looks cool or like can we make it cooler doesn't really mean anything <laughs> and t typically the best kind of feedback is something that is a complaint okay um and so like because you can improve the negatives you can't improve a positive yeah okay. yeah so positives are good so you can you can say like you know i like these things like i like how those are being a part of it and i want to see more of that mm -hmm. and then you also need to look for the things that you don't like um and just ask a lot of questions i guess okay and um yeah that's that's the best way i could say to go about feedback don't uh don't or try to be specific in terms of what you have a problem with and what you like to see more of okay and um and don't try to uh don't try to like um micromanage the person you're working with you know don't try and tell them well, let the artist be an artist it. exactly <laughs> so don't say i like this but you know you think you could use this font instead of that font like that's not helpful you know that like it's okay to have a style stylistic preference Mm -hmm. But what's more helpful is to say, I'm not a big fan of this font, and then sort of explain why, and then let the artist pick something else. Okay. That um, and that's, yeah, that just, in general, helps us um, make better design choices as opposed to just throwing stuff on there because we need to make the client happy. You know? Yeah. At the end of the day, if the client likes it, the client likes it. If they don't, they don't. But um, we care more about making something that is going to work than just making something and changing little things because the person likes it better. Mm -hmm. So I guess we should step back a little bit. I had my questions out of order. So what got you started into graphic design? Like to begin with, like what started uh, MP Designs and then what started... Um, dang it, I forgot to turn those off. <laughs> uh, what started uh, MP Designs and then what started uh, Drain Brand? Okay. Um, design, like I've been an artist my whole life. I've always been someone to draw and someone that likes to create things you know i spent a lot of time as a kid running around and creating um imaginary worlds and stuff like that and so i like to draw um art's always been kind of who i am and then going through school i eventually uh found myself in a like graphic design class i thought it was fun you know i like computers i like art so i'm like yeah i'll do both got into high school and they were like yeah you got to pick something so i was like all right i guess i'll do more graphic design and then went along with that and um like the biggest problem i had back then is the the teacher had a way of saying design is not art you know mm -hmm. design is making something for a purpose and it's not supposed to be artistic and that was like a huge turnoff for me but um, uh -huh. coming out of high school, you know, people are like, so what are you going to do with your life? And I it was like, I guess, uh, you know, the only real thing that has stuck with me has been this graphic design stuff. So I was like, I guess I'll go to college for that. And I was like, whatever. And I kind of did. But I, I fell in love with doing design um, the start of last year when I stumbled across... Uh, this uh, YouTube channel from this designer and sort of went down this 
rabbit hole and realized that there was this massive online community and uh, and real life community of all kinds of different designers and artists and stuff that were all doing this. And it really opened my eyes to the fact that it wasn't just a logic thing, you know, that it was a mix. Okay. That art and design are kind of the same thing. It's so like, that's where it, so when it you started. say art and design are kind of the same thing, when you say in the logic mix, are you talking about like having the layout of design with the artistic abilities of putting in the graphics or? Yeah. What, I mean, yeah because like a designer is typically an artist right mm -hmm. but in the same way that when an artist is doing a painting they're keeping in mind the um, fundamentals of what makes a painting look good okay a designer is keeping in mind the fundamentals of what will make what they're designing work you know mm -hmm. if that makes sense things like layout things like color theory um and stuff like that depending yeah. on what they're doing and so um, a good quote that I always think of, um, I don't remember who said it, but someone had said that I don't think about beauty when I'm making a design, but if my design is not beautiful, I know it's not good. So like design is the foundation. The artistic part is what makes it look good. Okay. I, um, I, I follow that. I mean, that, that makes, that makes sense. I mean, I didn't think about it that way, but that, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So, you know, there's the, the specific reasons of why you put the stuff on your stream layout the way you do. Mm -hmm. um, but like what you put there is, is more than just that. And so um, I started MP design at the start of last year, just sort of to, um really like realize that and set it in my head that i was going to be doing it and so, then so you put it into action to make so it's yeah. not just in the head it's actually into exactly. action exactly and i didn't know really where to go with it i was just kind of doing different things and um sort of got a little bit of, of like overwhelm and uh that's actually what got me involved in the streaming community um at around may ish i i was tired like I, I felt a lot of pressure that i needed to try and design for um a specific kind of people you know for like businesses and stuff like that mm -hmm. um that i couldn't focus on doing things just for fun because no one would take that seriously okay and that really like burned me out so around may i said you know screw it for a long time now, I've I've liked the idea of doing designing for content creators, mm -hmm. and before it had been like YouTube. But then I was like, you know, um, what if I what if I went about doing trying to do it for streamers? And the biggest problem was I didn't know any streamers, <laughs> <laughs> so um, and I didn't really know specifically what stuff streamers would need. And that's why, that's the main reason why I started streaming. Um, because doing branding for myself taught me what I would need to actually be doing. And then it allowed me to make a lot of friends and relationships, which has led me to be able to do the kind of work that I love doing. Mm -hmm. And so now I have a large focus on working with content creators. And that's not just like doing stream overlays too. I mean, you're doing shirts, you're doing apparel, yeah. you're, you're doing a bunch of different things and like what a lot of people assume when they start streaming, I need a graphic designer because I need a logo and I need a couple overlays. Mm -hmm. You're, you're, mm -hmm. you've now, you're showing that, that, that there's other avenues to go through um, from yeah. what I've seen so far. Yeah, exactly. Like, the the way like what i do i sort of think of as being like a more overarching thing for streamers as opposed to doing specifically like stream um focused stuff like the actual things you're using for streams mm -hmm. i i do that kind of stuff too but um i'm not i'm not an animator so i can't do like fancy um uh what do you want to call it like different stuff uh, like intro pages and stuff like that. Okay. Um, so you're, you're talking something. like the animated intros and the, yeah, the exploding, yeah. you know, everything exactly. going around special yeah. effects. Okay. Yeah. 
I, I don't know how to do that. Um, someday I want to learn. I'm trying to, you know, one thing at a time. But um, like the bigger overarching idea of coming up with a theme and color, coming up with um, like what colors you're going to use, what kind of style you're going to have, as well as like, you know, logo and social media stuff and all that kind of thing. And then merch is something that I think is really fun to do. Mm -hmm. And that's, so that's the kind of stuff that I mostly focus on. Okay. Um, and then if people, if people want me to, I, I also have done um, actual stream overlay stuff as well. But I think there's other people that can do that better. And I'm not afraid to admit that. <laughs> you know? Well, I mean, that's, I mean, in any profession, you're always wanting to be able to admit where your strengths lie and where someone else's mm -hmm. strengths lie. Because if you're open and honest, I mean, that immediately drives more people towards you as a person to go to in specific situations because it's like, I know they're going to be honest to me and I know they're going to drive me in the right direction. Right. And then, so drained um, is like a whole different sort of story. Drained is, uh, is kind of a passion project of mine that I'm starting um, that has sort of been accumulating over the last year. And it wasn't really until uh, two months ago that I really decided what I want to do with it. But um, it's, basically a clothing brand that i'm trying to really pour a lot of my like personal philosophy and stuff into it's really focused on like self-acceptance um really anti-fake polish kind of garbage that you see a lot of times on social media and stuff nowadays yeah and so um yeah that's that's a, a big passion project of mine that is completely separate from the branding work i do but is is very fulfilling, fulfilling for me. Um, so, so I mean that the drain brand is also um, you're giving a partial your proceeds. Uh, yeah, I was reading that on your website. So you're giving partial proceeds to mental health awareness programs mm -hmm. as well. So no, you're yeah. not just it's a passion project, but it's also being a project to better you know the world around you too mm -hmm. yeah my whole life i've really wanted to to make an impact on people and i've never really known how that will come about you know when i was younger i wanted to be involved in video game design and making that video games because i really like the idea of creating worlds for other people to explore um there was a, a point in my life where i considered becoming a therapist but um, eventually I decided that it, I don't think it'd be a good fit for me. I don't think it would be uh, healthy for me to be around people like that all the time. Mm -hmm. And so like the, the mental health stuff that um, I just felt like that was something I wanted to do. I've something I've wanted to do for a long time is find ways to uh, give back to that. Um, and like when I, when I started streaming and stuff, I sort of had it as a distant goal that I would do uh, like charity streams and stuff for uh, mental health awareness and stuff like that. So when I made Drained, I decided that that was something I wanted to be a big part of it as well. That's awesome. That's that's yeah. awesome. So I'm I'm hoping that like I'm hoping that the brand itself can have like a positive mental health sort of message to it. Mm -hmm. It can have a positive influence on the mental health of people who are part of the community. Um, and then beyond that, can also raise money to go towards mental health research. Yeah. Because that's, I mean, that's that's something that I, I've noticed in at least the Mixer streaming community. A lot of people are open and willing to talk about it. And I know in the last year, we've lost actually a couple of community members in the Destiny 2 directory due to mental yeah. health so it's it's yeah. it's it's actually a really close i mean i've had mental health issues since high school myself mm -hmm. and i've talked about that a little bit but it's it's something that is should be on the on for lack of better wording should be on the top of everyone's head and mind of you know being mindful when you're you're in a community that there mm -hmm. are people that they'll need help and and there'll be times when we need to make awareness of these situations because it's hard to seek help for yourself if you're not having others help you. For sure. Yeah, and, and you can look at the brand I'm making as an example of why branding is important, right? Because like 
all these ideas I've said that I've had that I wanted to put into this brand. If I wasn't a designer, I would have a lot of questions of like, how can I get that message across? Yeah. And so that's why it's how, like, that's why it's good to talk to people about that and get people who can help you really um, visualize that image. Mm -hmm. So, um, nice. Yeah. So you talked a little bit about why you got into streaming was to, to t talk to you and work with content creators. Is there any other reasons why you got into streaming? I mean, of course, you know, um, wanting to play video games on the yeah, internet is kind of fun, but fun. You, yep. are you also doing art streams as well? I haven't caught one, but I, um, I have a couple times. I'm, okay. I'm, I, uh, I've i been debating on doing more if there's interest for it. Um, and it's, it's a weird thing of like, I'm never really sure what I can and can't stream. You know what I mean? Oh, cause like people do or don't want me to show because, because you're doing work for others. It's like, well, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I really want to, you know, show their right. brand off before they re right. they release it on channel. Yeah. yeah. It's a, it's a like self-confidence hurdle. I'm going to have to get through in general because like the idea of having people watch me sort of problem solve <laughs> through things is kind of uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm like, uh, people are going to think I suck. It's, you get the peanut gallery in the background. Yeah, why, so why'd you draw sure. an oval, why'd you draw a circle instead of an oval for a face you yeah. should always have an oval face exactly <laughs> and uh, i'm sure well i'm sure that won't be the case so I, i'll get over it and i'll i think um i think it's uh, like my my channel may end up transitioning into primarily a art channel in general okay um just because like just... trying to find time <laughs> to do the design work and do the streaming when I have a full-time job is very difficult. Yes. So are are you working in industry as well, or are you searching for work in industry? Um, sort of. I I work at a screen printing, uh, okay, shop. I yeah, I'm a I run a automatic screen printing press, so we print shirts and stuff like that. Um, okay. And it's been actually like the biggest <laughs> um, reason why I've been able to start this clothing brand because my boss is. A badass and he allows me to order the shirts through him and not have to pay for it nice. so, well it also gives you a heads up because since you already know how screen printing works and it's how it's slightly different on handling of colors when it overlays mm -hmm. colors onto a shirt oh man it's so, so it's important. it's like having to know that you're dealing with instead of like rgb you're dealing with what is it cmyk it's yeah cmyk yeah it's so so important like if I don't, I don't, I don't know, but from what I do know, screen printing is probably the like most design specific thing that you can be doing. Like yeah. there's a lot you need to like think about. And we have a lot of stuff that we print there that is just, you can tell that the artist doesn't know, a, a, doesn't know shit about screen printing. <laughs> yeah. You know? And that's, that's where, I mean, again, where the person like myself as a content creator, not knowing jack shit about design work coloring any of this how to even mm -hmm. start with photoshop um going to someone like you it's like i have to let you you know here's my idea here's the basic thing that i want to do mm -hmm. what what do i need to give to you so like as, as someone approaching you when i'm starting the process like if i'm like okay i need a rebrand i'm you know starting this new thing streaming i've been doing it for three months and i'm actually going to give it a real go Mm -hmm. you know what do what, what should i bring to you as a as a right. graphic design artist what yeah um and like to start off i would I would say like as general advice that you really need to um have a set idea in your head of like what you want your channel to be about and that's why like i wouldn't really advise somebody trying to go out and get branding done when they just start like i think that you should start um you should decide like for sure that this is something you want to commit to that you want to be doing this you want to be making this content and you want to build that up mm -hmm. because like in general branding isn't cheap <laughs> you know it's it's not it's not like going on fiber and buying a ten dollar logo or some shit you know? yeah it's, I, I, it's not cheap and so as someone that has looked a little bit I've seen base packages like a logo and one scene starting at a hundred bucks. I've seen that go up to a $500. Yeah. I'd say so it's, it's a generous. huge, huge range, huge range out there depending on 
artists and quality you'll get back. So make sure you're also researching that quality. And that's why I want to talk to someone about it. Cause I'm like, I've seen his stuff. I know his stuff and I know he does good work. So it's like, so a person <laughs> that you. I want to talk to. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. It's, um, it is, it is really deceiving or it, it's intimidating. Like, and as a designer, like that, that makes me like feel bad for people because like I do what I do because I love getting to bring people's dreams to life, you know, like getting to when I make something and I can see people react to it and I can tell that like, they're just like, yes, this is exactly what I need. Mm -hmm. Like that feels great. I want to do that. I want people to not feel so intimidated by what they need to do to make their dreams happen that they don't do them. Um, and so, like, for me, it, I, it makes me sad, the idea that people won't go and get this stuff done just because it, it's expensive. And it's going to depend. Like, I, um, my biggest influence on how I do pricing for people is, um, like, I, I, I think about how much value it's going to have to that person in particular. Mm -hmm. you know, if someone's just getting started, like, it's, I'm not going to charge them $1,000 for a logo. You know, if if Ninja were to ask me for a logo, I'd be like, "Shit, dude, fifty thousand dollars, okay." <laughs> Bring it <laughs> on. Because you know, it's it your audience like has a or how much people are going to be seeing it. Like everyone is going to get a different amount of value from the same kind of thing. Yeah. Um. So, like, if you are just getting started, if you're like have a couple hundred viewers or whatever, and you like reach out an artist asking for branding and they're like yeah it's gonna cost you like two thousand dollars you gotta be like no yeah well it comes for down sure. to like how when you when you're starting out you're making you're not making any money i mean as a content creator most content creators will go for a year to five years making no money at this absolutely so yeah. you're you're spending money out of pocket out of your household income out mm -hmm. of your you know hey i'm not gonna get a, i'm not gonna get pizzas for the next two years you know, I'm not right. going to get coffees right. for the next year. I'm going to do this instead. And that's the kind of decision you got to make is like, yeah, when you're thinking about spending money on branding and making good quality branding. Mm -hmm. But, um, but I would definitely say like, don't let that push you away from getting someone to do it. Yeah. If you've decided that you want to commit to this, like, and you, you know what you want, like you got to be willing to invest because it is definitely a worthwhile investing investment to have someone make you, or do your branding professionally. Yeah. It, it has like a massive influence on the amount of traffic you're going to get. You, you wouldn't know it, but it does. And I'm sure you can ask people who, um, you know, who have been doing streaming for a while and you can ask them like, Hey, after you got a rebrand, like, did you notice, a difference and i guarantee they'll say yeah definitely did well i think it also helps as like a confidence boost right because like as a streamer mm -hmm. when you had the same thing like when i first started my i had a four by three picture of just my face yeah. I, I i had all the stream labs logos and you know stream boss and all this stuff all over the screen and i i mean i was full on stream labs like i had all yeah. their stuff on screen mm -hmm. and it's like no 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 i need to tone back i need to I need to make myself look different. I need to do something different because doing this is just, this is busy. And what it should be about is like, from my view is like, I want to be able to interact with the, the group that's in chat, that's hanging out. And then I want to be able to interact with the game. And so it's the two things that I, I care about is like the interaction with chat and the interaction with the game. And that's, that's really it for me. I mean, I don't, I'm not about the bling and the this over here and that over there. I mean, I'm I'm about having some funny gifts and some memes and some inside community jokes. And I don't mean just like my direct channel community. I mean like suboptimal rogue squadron, like having that cross community, like send red and bread and toast and all that other type of stuff that we have going on um, across everything. And that's, that's what it's like. That community is like what I want to have the memes in. Yeah exactly and it's so much easier to do that kind of brand work if you have those kind of things set up so, so 
so moving on, um, I, we are running a little long on my episodes here, so we're about 30 minutes now. So one of the things right. I wanted to kind of cover, and then we'll do some wrap up and anybody have questions in chat, feel free to put them in and we'll pull your questions in for somewhat or for myself yeah. and we'll try to answer them. Um, but as, uh, as your process, as you work with the streamer after you kind of had that initial conversation, what's your process? How do you interact with the streamer as you develop what they've requested? So if they requested a logo uh, redesign from you, what would be your process to walk through on that one? Um, so the first thing I do is like, I I just have a conversation with them, you know, like it, it's been different for everyone depending on what they are comfortable with or what they want to do. But I've had a couple people where I like, was on a phone call with them for a while. Um, okay. I had a couple people that I just like hopped into Discord server and voice chat with them for a couple hours. Basically, the idea is like at the very beginning, like I just need to get to know the person, to get to know like what they are trying to do and what kind of channel they want to have. And I take a lot of notes on that stuff. And that's where I ask them, like, you know, give me, the, they tell me, you know, what kind of symbolism are things that um, are important to you personally, because I think that if your branding is personal, it's going to have a bigger impact on people. And then what kind of message are you wanting to send? What kind of channel do you want to be? Okay. And then um, from there, uh, I usually put together a mood board, just like a collection of different uh, images and uh, fonts and stuff like that. Basically, okay. A collection of other things nothing that i've made most of the time but a collection of things that i go and find um and put them together and i will send it to the other person and then we'll talk about it and the goal of that is to just make sure we're on the same page about the kind of aesthetic and design direction that i'm thinking we should be going in mm -hmm. Does that makes sense yeah so that I don't make something and then have to go, oh, that's not at all what it's, I want. And so you're not going down a complete creative process before having like a, exactly. a back and forth that may be able to have a direction. Otherwise, you're just kind of shooting in the dark type situation. Yeah. So that's what I usually do. If, if they agree with the design direction, then uh, depending on what they're having me do, I um, just start sketching out some stuff. Um, typically, I'll sketch out like 10 or so different very different ideas that i come with myself i'll pick four or five that i think are the best and send it to them um ask them what they think they tell me what they like what they don't like and then i'll make some like actually um higher quality stuff actually digitally on computer uh of the ones that uh, that they liked and then send those and then um we'll pick the one we like the most and from there i sort of come with a couple of different uh mild variations off of that base thing mm -hmm. and then um we decide what is the best and at that point it's more or less done just little things okay and then, yeah and you know it's it, you can't yeah, tweak from there like a yeah if it's like a full full branding thing i usually start with the logo okay and What's what, the logos set? What would you what say your time frames on things like that are like turnaround for you? Are, right now, they're probably a little bit more flexible because you are also not hugely filled up with time, but you also mm -hmm. don't have an infinite bank of time. Yeah. Um, uh, for, let's say, for like a full branding thing of getting, let's say, to do a logo, um, a banner for social media, um, and say a, a simple -ish stream overlay, you know, like a webcam outline, mm -hmm. um, and maybe like one other thing or something like that. Something for like, some for that would probably, depending on how fast um, the communication goes with people, uh, would take probably a month, maybe okay. a little more. Um, the merch design that I did for Red took me um, roughly two weeks. And it was like four designs? It, yeah, four designs, three shirts. Yeah. Um, 
and yes, other stuff I've done in the past is it will vary and uh, depending on how good the converse, the communication is, um, it goes faster or slower. And depending on how quickly I can come up with something that fits what they're looking for. So it's all, so what you're saying is is having good open communication with your artists is the key mm-hmm. to spe- speedy delivery on a timeline if you have one. Mm-hmm. Communication is so important. You know. Awesome. So um, before we wrap up, is there any questions or things that you would like to cover before we wrap? Anything you um, think we didn't miss or is important that we, we I skipped over? I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> I think that, I'm good. Also, I think I've caught, caught you pretty late at night, and I know that, and I apologize, and I yeah, say thank I'm you so a, much. I'm a, I'm a night owl. So, <laughs> so decent. do you want to tell everyone where they can find you, talk to you, get a hold of you online, Discord, Twitters, yeah. Instagrams, and anything? Yeah, so um, my... I guess I can drop a link in the chat for the Discord in a minute here. Okay. Um, it's not... It's all those random active. characters at the end of the discord i'll, I'll put it yeah. in the uh description of the podcast too for those yeah, that are looking but at I'm, the podcast I'm definitely up to talk on there if people want to talk um my twitter is at somewhat decent s-u-m-w-u-t and decent <laughs> um and then on instagram it's at mb design and uh what's that called MP underscore Understood. design. Yeah, there you go. That's my design um, profile. And if you want to check out my clothing brand, then that's at drained underscore brand. And uh, that also is drained underscore brand on Twitter. Awesome. Uh, and I'll drop those into chat and I'll let you drop your Discord in when you get a chance. And I think that'll be it for tonight, guys. Uh, we're going to wrap the podcast there. And we'll be kicking over to some division for the rest of the night. So thank you very much for hanging out with the Nightcast. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful one, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.